Happy New Year. It's the first day of the league year, which of course means nothing at this point because most of the free agent action has already happened. So it's all anticlimactic. And it gets back to my point. They should just start this all at once and not have this stupid ass two day negotiating period. Yeah, don't disagree. Good morning. Good to see you. And yeah, it has crossed my mind like, oh, wait, what if all these guys, you know, go down this path of, hey, we'll sign with the Jets and he doesn't do that. But like, this is why this is happening. You know, I, I it, it, we know it's going to happen. I, I mean, we might have hear about it here later today on the live Pat McAfee show. I don't know where it's going, but I mean, all all signs point to that happening and them continuing to accumulate people that, that make Rodgers comfortable in this transition. I don't think it was an accident yesterday that we started to hear more and more about some of these other guys. Right. Not anything new about Aaron Rodgers, although behind the scenes, there is a strong presumption now that he will eventually end up with the Jets. The impediment, as I understand it, continues to be that final stare down between Green Bay and New York. We talked about this yesterday. Who's got more leverage in the situation? The Packers think they do because... I'm told the Packers are content to wait. This option bonus that Aaron Rodgers is due to receive, it's critical to understand how it applies to the salary cap. If the Packers don't exercise it, it becomes salary, $58.3 million. And when it becomes salary, all of it counts against this year's cap. But it doesn't become salary until the window to exercise it closes. The window to exercise it opens today and remains open until week one of the regular season. They've got months where they don't have to exercise it, and it counts as if it was exercised. So they don't have this massive cap number until they don't exercise it week one. So they have full flexibility. And my understanding is they believe that for them, the draft is the deadline because they want 2023 picks or pick, or whatever, but they want whatever draft pick they get or picks to happen in the 2023 draft. So that's their deadline. So they can drag this out. And the Jets are the ones that, I think in the estimation of some, have to get this damn thing done. So I don't know how much longer this goes. But from Green Bay's perspective, look, it's not like he's in the building, and it's not like he's going to be in the building. Yeah, the offseason program starts next month. He ain't going to be there. He won't be there before draft day. They have until April 27. That's what the Packers think. So I sure hope this doesn't drag out until then. But right now, the impediment is Green Bay, arms crossed, staring at the Jets, arms crossed, staring at the Packers, and waiting for someone to blink on whatever that last little piece is. Watch it end up being some stupid little thing. But that's what happens sometimes. They They – fight over stupid little things yeah no they do I mean uh, we're all kind of waiting on the edge of our chair here just to, to hear you know what are what are those details I feel like I've never been so clueless in a situation you know and even talking to people around the league it's like nobody's got a great feel or has any idea what's going on so that is kind of odd in itself I don't know what that last detail is and uh, I, th- it's, yeah, I, I'm sure it's part of the trade package and whether that's a mid round pick, another throw in, throw in pick there, it does change the dynamic of the whole conversation to what you're talking about, Mike. I mean, but at the same time, I don't think Aaron Rodgers wants to do that. He doesn't want to drag on and wait. Uh, he's he's going to, if he's just going to make this move, of course we know, right? Hey, yeah, he's got to get there, get working with guys, start to lay the the ground or the you know the train tracks, the groundwork here to to get them going in the right direction. But with the Packers situation, you know they could talk tough too, Mike. I don't know if I really believe that they want to have this looming over them. And oh wait, we got all this time to sit here and hang out. It's going to become a distraction for them and Jordan Love and everybody else in that locker room too. So you know they can play tough at least as far as that conversation is concerned. But I, I think, you know, they've already spoke their truth. We already know it. So, you know, to, to maybe talk tough now to just get a little more leverage to get that final detail of the trade you're talking about, I'm not sure I buy it. But 
the Jets are very desperate, and it's like, what the hell do they do if this doesn't get done with Aaron Rodgers like we talked about? And that's why I just can't imagine it won't get done. And the Jets are paying close attention to everything that's out there. I think there's a level of anxiety with some of these reports. I don't think they want to be blamed by Aaron Rodgers as leaking anything that is trying to make this kind of happen. The and Jets yesterday are, was the I'll day. I'll vouch for the Jets. I know people at the Jets. It's crickets. I can't get a word from any of them. So that tells you how important it is. Can't even get text messages back. So the, the, I, that says it all. Now, you know, were some things going to get out? Yeah, of course. You know, the players he's talking to, they have agents, and there's people in Green Bay that might talk to a few people here and there. So it's not going to be like ironclad, totally squeezed dry here where nothing's going to get out. But damn, for this magnitude of a a, a, a player and, and like trade here, it is pretty crazy how quiet it's been for the most part. I will say this, for everything that we've said, everything I've written at PFT, the only reaction I got was when I suggested yesterday on Twitter that the Jets are leaking this list of names that right. makes it clear where the ball is moving. And I got an immediate reaction, literally within minutes, that we're not leaking anything. We're not leaking. We're <laughs> that not tells you. leaking <laughs> They're not messing with King yeah. Rogers right now. They know who the King yeah. is, and he's got him. So they're 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 gonna do right by him. They want to make it work, like you said. How could there not be a little panic? All their options are gone out the door. Garoppolo was probably the last guy they were sitting there. Hey, Raiders swoop in, give him a big deal. That's over. So now it's like, yeah, all your eggs are in the Aaron Rodgers basket. And hey, they're being smart, playing it close to the vest, not and certainly not going to try to upset him in this, you know, final 24, 48 hours or however long it's going to be. So at one o'clock Eastern today, Aaron Rodgers will appear with Pat McAfee and his former teammate AJ Hawk in Green Bay. And I'm surprised those two guys haven't been mentioned as future Jets at this point. I mean, hell, every other friend and former teammate of well, Aaron Rodgers seems to be popping up. The list that he rattled off at the start of the show when he was with McAfee back in January, right. three of those guys have already been linked to the New York Jets. So we're going to hear something from Rodgers. Now, what it is, who knows? And will he complain about the coverage? Will he say, nobody knows anything about me? He seems to take a combination of glee and consternation in the fact that people – want to report on his comings and goings. It gets back to the thing we've talked about many times, fame on your own terms. Hey, everybody, look at me. What the hell are you looking at? Come on, Aaron, who cares if people are trying to figure out where you're going to play football next year? It goes with the territory. It's one of the reasons you make so much money. It's one of the reasons you're standing to make nearly $60 million this year. The sport is popular. People pay attention to it. That attention fuels the gigantic checks that gets paid. I say that about Bill Belichick multiple times a year. Hey, right. Bill, if you don't like the media, go coach high school lacrosse somewhere and get paid accordingly. It's part of why these guys make so much money because so many people care about it. So don't get pissed. Just accept it. Just accept it. Maybe he has. Maybe that's one of the points of enlightenment, Chris, that he obtained when he was in a darkened bungalow for a couple of days. I want to hear about that, too. I want to hear about all kinds of stuff. Well, I'm sure I want to hear will about the darkness point. retreat. Yeah. I want to hear about any plant medicine that he may have been taking over the past few weeks to make his decision. Well, he and comes to New York. I, I, I got some plant he... medicine for him. So if he comes this way, I got yeah, some I... for him if he needs it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but hey, look, I, I'll be, I, 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 I won't be surprised Yeah. if – he uses this as a platform to kind of pressure the Packers to just get this over with. Come out. I'm, well, I mean, and that's, that's what I'm curious about. How candid will he be? Well, look, I've agreed to the trade. I just, I'm just waiting as everyone else is for the Jets and Packers to work something out. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the issue is, but you know, if Mark Murphy means what he said last week, and that's one of the other keys to this, because Mark Murphy, when you look at what he said, yeah, and how he said it last week, and when you remember that there is that acrimony that's lingering toward Aaron Rodgers and the people at the top of the organization, I I hope that I hope they play Murphy's words on McAfee's show today and ask Aaron Rodgers to respond. I hope I hope they do that. Now again, this this is safe space time, idea. and and I 
Right. But 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 again, we must not disturb the delicate genius. Part of the quid pro quo, getting the guy to go on the show all the time, is you never put him in a position where he's asked a tough question. And that hey, look, that's the way the world works now. Yeah, the sure. league has media sure. that it employs. The teams have media that they employ. You have to kind of understand going in what you're getting. You're not going to get a real interrogation of Aaron Rodgers here. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. But if you're going to bring him on any show today, anyone that's going to talk to him to have any credibility whatsoever, you got to play the Murphy sound and ask him to respond to it. Well, you that, have that, to. Yeah, if right? you don't do it, it's not real. Well, you're right. I don't know if they will. It'd be cool, and especially if you wanted to add a little pressure onto the situation. But I think, Mike, that goes back to, you know, kind of what we were saying, right, with Green Bay, like, oh, yeah, we got the power and all that. But, you know, they, they've also talked themselves a little bit into a corner you know, whether it's through the grapevines of the NFL or just, you know, what you're referring to there with Mark Murphy. Oh, well, yeah, it's not our best option. I, you know, I know I'm jump, jumbling the quote a little bit. Um, but, hey, this Aaron Rodgers, you say what you want, you know. I know he's said some things, been controversial. It is cool he's doing this today. It is cool the access he gives to Mac McAfee. Is it protected? Sure. But, damn, he opens up more on these things than a lot of players do anywhere else. So I'll give him credit for that. And then, like, Mike, to another thing, too, to where you're talking about these final details or whatever. Like, really, in a realistic world, there's no way, right, that I think Alan Lazard signs with the New York Jets unless he knows Aaron Rodgers is going there, right? So there, it, it is. Is it, is it a throwaway mid-round pick? Is it about, you know, an escalator if he plays 80%, it goes to a second round and the Jets want it to be a third round? I, I got to think it's something like that. But this is still – you know, a cool moment. It's a, It seems LeBron-ish type moment, right? You know, the decision, you know, not maybe quite that big, but still it's up there. Uh, but here's another thing, Mike, that I just want to throw out to you. Do you think that, you know, a, a contract amendment could be slowing this thing up by any stretch of the imagination? Could Rodgers be – could they be trying to figure something out as far as him taking some less money – so then, you know, hey, we pay Alan Lazard. Hey, we, we now maybe can have money to get Odell Beckham Jr. and Randall Cobb and all that. You think that could possibly be happening here? Well, here's the reality. Yeah. They take on his contract. They exercise the option bonus. His cap number for the Jets is going to be up to $15 million. Yeah. Why does he so, need to yeah, take Yeah, I guess less? you're right. It doesn't really matter. You want me? Yeah. You want me? Yeah. You, you're, you're, look, you want me in New York to try to turn your, your perpetually struggling franchise around. And you want me to take less money? No, no. This is my contract. If you're going to trade for me, you're getting my contract. Now, we've said before that there's some sort of a gesture that maybe he could engage in that would help endear him to the New York media market. And that would be smart and self-aware if he were willing to do that. But as it relates to having cap dollars available yeah, this it's year not a killer for there. some of these other players. Right. He's $15 million. Yeah. That's, that's nothing. That's peanuts for your starting quarterback. Now, they're going to pay the bill on the back end. You know, if he only plays one year, they're going to have a significant bill to pay. And the way that it would happen is, let's say, he plays a year with the Jets and then retires. If they process the retirement after June 1 of 2024, right. they would take the bulk of the cap charge in 25. And, hell, in today's NFL, it may as well be 20 years from now, not two years from now, especially when there's no guarantee that Joe Douglas will be there or Robert Sala will be well, there. Because, look, this is an all-in experiment that potentially blows up in everyone's face and sure. gets people fired. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know who the driving force in New York is for this. If it's, a, if it's an ownership decision, then Sala and Douglas can just say, hey, man, we're just, we're just doing what you wanted. I mean, this may be perfect for them. If this is all Woody and or Christopher Johnson saying, we're doing this. This is 2008 all over again. We're getting the new Brett Favre. We're doing this. We're going to sell out the tickets. We're going to sell jerseys. We're going to dust off Joe Namath's number, and we're going to try to finish the job that we started that year, and we would have gotten to the playoffs if – if Brett Favre didn't have a partially torn biceps tendon. If they're driving it, then it's scholarship year for Douglas and Sala because if it goes to hell, they, they say, it wasn't our idea. We just pick up where we left off next year with Zach Wilson 
or someone or somebody else. else. Yeah. And if right. it goes well, then they get then they get the, then they join in the credit and it secures their future and they all get new contracts. So this is a no lose situation for them if this is something that's driven by ownership. And I have a weird feeling. Yeah, that I it think is. it is. I, I mean, it starts with you know I, I think Woody Johnson right at the end of the year and and the things he said and that he would be willing to spend or do whatever it takes to get that. So. You know, of course, I, I'm sure Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are in favor of it, especially at this point right now with the options, like we said, lacking, not a lot out there. You know, but Mike, the other thing, too, that's where I was kind of going with the contract thing, though. So not specifically to this year, but maybe that's where the Jets are wanting some sort of amendment. And maybe maybe I'm stupid and blonde and from Jersey and went to Texas and all those things are true. So I, maybe I'm not catching on. But could they adjust it to where, hey, you know, hey, we'd like you to adjust your number because, you know, there's, we might trade for you and after year one you might leave and then we're going to be stuck with this to where maybe they could soft, you know, soften that blow of future years cap hit. You know, that, that's what I was trying to say. I don't know if I'm crazy or stupid or like I said. Well, but the contract that he signed last year with the yeah. Packers was specifically designed to give him flexibility to retire right. after every year right. of the deal. You walk away without a major debt owed to the team now. Next year, you walk away without a major debt owed. And the idea is you want me for this year, and I want to be with you. This is what I'm getting paid. It's a total of $60 million. It's yeah. structured in a way to reduce right. the cap charge and push these numbers out. And I'm looking at this. See, the Jets don't have to take on any of the cap obligation for the signing bonus that he received last year of $40 million. Right. This is about this option bonus, and when you take the 58-3, we can do the math here. This should be pretty simple. It's It spreads over... Four years, 58.3, you divide it by four. He's got $14.5 million to count this year and a very low salary of $1.165. That's where the $15 million and change gotcha. come from. Gotcha. So it would be $14.5 million counting under that option bonus this year. Yeah. Next year, it would be $14.5 million. And then for the dead year, if they process the retirement after June 1, it becomes like $29 million that they carry 29 million is nothing. It's not the word dead right. money. That right. They don't have to that. Right. It's nothing. It's nothing. So I, if I'm him and look, what, wh what, like if they're trying to lure the turtle to stick his head out of the shell, when they all get on the plane and go to California to kiss his ring and or his ass, do you really think on the agenda of items to discuss with Aaron Rodgers? It's, do you think you'll take less money? I mean, I think it's implied. Yeah. It's like if you has to have to ask, you can't afford it. Yeah, okay. They, they know what they're going to buy. Yep, They're okay. flying across the country to buy a Ferrari. They're not going to haggle over the price of the Ferrari. Yeah, okay. You're right. And it, listen, th thanks for straightening that out. I, You know, I didn't really know those details of the contract there. So that was something that was definitely I've had people ask me about, and it's kind of been percolating through my brain. Now, the other aspect of this, Mike, that's like maybe holding this up as I go down football world at least is like – well, hey, Rogers, you want your friends, right? Okay, cool. But can you give us a little time here to try to figure out to maybe trade a Corey Davis or make some other roster moves here to clear it out for you and your friends? You know, that's the other thing out there. Yeah, Alan Lazard sign, right? But Randall Cobb, maybe an Odell Beckham. You know, then you also hear about Mercedes Lewis, the guy you know Rogers talked about at the top of the show. Oh, so 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 is that could be a possibility there. These are not like areas of desperate need for the New York Jets, right? I would think now that Alan Lazard is there, that makes Corey Davis expendable and that he would be traded or I don't know if they can't find a trade partner released. Tight end is not a need for the Jets, kind of strong, right? There's no issue there. So uh, that maybe that's part of the wrinkle too, you know. But I have had a lot of people ask me, Mike, like, do the Jets really need the receiver or whatever? I do think they can benefit from a guy like Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. We've talked about it. They're young and immature at that position. We love Garrett Wilson and being with him at the Super Bowl, awesome guy, right? You know, but you know, him and Elijah Moore, they had a few moments of immaturity in front of the microphone last year. You know, we're somewhat of a distraction. Uh, now you got, you know, some older veteran guys in here that kind of show you how things work and, of course, show you how the things Rodgers works. But, you know, just some other things. But that's, that, not, why, that's not why they want him. No, Chris, I know it's not. They wouldn't be giving a second look at Randall Cobb or Mercedes Lewis oh. if they weren't trying to get Aaron Rodgers. But, Mike. It's I, a way to help justify. It's a way to help justify surrendering control of your team sure. to one guy. 
but no, I, but Mike, they I wouldn't know. give two shits about not, these I'm guys. Not, I'm not. I know. No, I'm just because yeah. because that narrative is already starting to percolate, right. and it's it's like an alternative reality. This is all about being friends and family members of Aaron Rodgers. Well, that's all it is. No, I it, of course it is. Of course it is. But you know, you also got to look at it and go, wait, is there really realistic value here in some of that? No, you know, Randall Cobb. He'd be the la- I wouldn't want him going over the middle for me if I was playing quarterback. No doubt about it. You know, hey, yeah, fifth receiver, maybe come in if somebody gets hurt, whatever. You're right. Nothing there. Lazard has real value. There's no doubt about that. Corey Davis, Jets fans would agree, has underperformed. I think he's gotten a little stuck in that bubble of, like, you know, the pressure and the money and, you know, had a drop in a moment here and there. And it's like Evan Ingram with the Giants where, like, the New York fan base is kind of on him that way. So there is value with Alan Lazard. But, yeah, you're right. The other ones, there, there's no tangible, oh, whoa, this is an improvement on the field. But just that doesn't mean there isn't still going to be value when they get there that they can help out in some ways. Uh, that's all I was trying to say before you yelled at me like a jerk on a Wednesday I didn't morning. yell at you. I didn't <laughs> yell at you. Oh, you, come on. You, yeah, come no, on. I'm just you will know when I yell no, at you. Oh, yeah, we you know. You will be fully aware we know. of yelling. <laughs> it was just last Wednesday. Uh, on, <laughs> I can't right. remember what it was about. Uh, Isn't that funny? I know. Like we all, oh, it was about Lamar Jackson. Oh, and he's on the he's on the rundown for later in the show. So oh, maybe good. We'll hear some yelling good. for the second straight Wednesday. <laughs> um, I I I really do wonder though. And look, this is a billion dollar organization, and they have made their decision. They've cast their lot. They're selling their soul. They want Aaron Rodgers. They are surrendering control of the team to this guy. They really are. They're making him the de facto GM. They're doing all the things that the Packers wouldn't do. Right. That's one of the things that drove the wedge between him and Green Bay. Their attitude toward him from the front office was, you just work here. Sit down and shut up. It softened a little bit, a little bit, and I think a lot of it, too. And I remember this conversation during the 2021 season when Odo Beckham Jr. became available. And it was obvious to us, Chris, yeah. that the Packers really weren't interested. Right. They were interested in making Aaron Rodgers believe they were interested. They wanted to be able to say, hey, Aaron, we tried, but he just chose the Rams. But when you looked at the offer, it was pathetic. Yeah. It wasn't calculated to get Odell Beckham Jr. to accept. They didn't mobilize the organization the way the Rams did. But I remember Rodgers talking about it in front of his locker, I think, after it all happened. And his attitude was, well, you know, they we talked about it and they tried. They I don't tried. have a problem with right, it. Right. But I mentioned OBJ because he's another one. Yeah. Reportedly on the Aaron Rodgers wish list. And they were there last week when when uh, Rodgers, or not when Rodgers, but when Beckham had his workout in Arizona for any interested teams. So... Uh, he's another one. And at a certain point, if you're currently on the Jets and you hear all these names and you remember there's only 53 jobs, <laughs> like for every guy that arrives, somebody who's here has to go. Yeah, I know. And it it's going to reach a critical mass where some of these guys are going to get nervous. Like Corey Davis may end up being part of the trade package to Green Bay. Yeah. That, no. They may not have to trade him anywhere else. He may already be penciled in as one of the guys making the move to Green Bay to fill the spot created by the arrival of Alan Lazard if and when he signs the contract after 4 p.m. Eastern today. And it's important to remember that, too. Lazard's not bound by anything. Like, if 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 Rodgers goes on McAfee's show today and says, you know what, I've I've slept about it, I, I slept on it, I've, I, I slept in a dark room last night, I took some ayahuasca, whatever, and I've decided I'm just going to retire, I have a feeling Alan Lazard's not signing that contract after 4 p.m. Eastern today. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I would, I would think so. I would, you know, but uh, you know, again, it's that's ifs, and I, I just, it seems like all signs are pointing towards Rodgers there. Now, the Corey Davis thing you talked about, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he's part of that package. You know, if you remember, remember last year, you know, speaking about the Jets fan base and all of that and the uneasiness, he was there was a lot of rumors about him maybe being traded to the Packers last year. So I would think he's on their radar. And he certainly would be good for a guy like Jordan Love and kind of, you know, restart himself after, you know, negativity, I guess, is what you want to say here with, with the New York Jets. But, yeah, the OBJ conversation, you know, that, that's a different one there. You know, that, that really is. You know, you know, the, the price tag, you know, yeah, sure, looks physically good. But, of course, a huge personality. Not only does Rodgers chase the, per, the, the locker room, but, of course, OBJ would, right? 
there'd be the pressure of OBJ getting the ball, you know, with Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore and, and Lazard and all that. I don't know. I don't see that part, part happening. You know, I, I can see them maybe trying to figure it out, talk to OBJ, but uh, that that's one where between OBJ's status health-wise, not knowing that, the price tag we've heard, and, man, you're also getting Aaron Rodgers. I just don't think the OBJ thing's going to happen. And there is one elephant in the room yeah. that I hope gets discussed at some point. And if Rodgers was smart, and and he is, yeah. he'd get it out of the way today before the introductory press conference. And What's that? The, the elephant in the room is this. Robert Wood Johnson IV, a.k.a. Woody Johnson, is an American businessman who was the U.S. ambassador to the U.K. from 2017 to 2021. He is the great-grandson of Robert Wood Johnson I and a billionaire heir to the Johnson & Johnson pharmaceutical fortune. Because I think on one of these Mac, well, I know, I don't know whether it was January 17, what we played earlier, or at some point after that, but at some point in the past two months, Rogers on McAfee's show suggested, and I don't want to say suggested because that implies it wasn't just flat out said. He said that Big Pharma, through sports media that Big Pharma, which is specifically Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, the three COVID vaccine manufacturers, have essentially directed sports media to make him a villain. So I just want to know how all of that is being processed by Aaron Rodgers. He's going to work for the guy who is the great-grandson of the founder of one of the three big pharma manufacturers that he believes is specifically pushing buttons and pulling strings to get people like us to make him a villain. And if that is the case, hey, Woody, where's my check? <laughs> yeah, right. I want my check. Yeah. PFT Live presented by Big Pharma. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Not that we've necessarily made him a villain. We've just covered the story, and I don't want to go back down that rabbit hole, but at some point someone's going to drag him down that rabbit hole, and that's why it makes sense for him to just address it today because I think in that introductory press conference, somebody in that room is going to ask him how he reconciles his apparent disdain for Big Pharma by pay taking a, a paycheck, essentially, from Big Pharma. I, it'd be interesting. I don't know. Will they? Will they ask him that? I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure they will. I, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see. I hope I, someone will. I know. I hope someone will, too. But I think everybody's going to be, especially at the first press conference, going to be too worried about kissing his butt and making sure, you know, he likes them and everybody's happy with them so they can have more access to them to do their own private story at some other point. So you know, I, I don't know if this one gets addressed here, Mike. This might be one where he avoids and just hopes that people don't really realize he said that and – doesn't want to start, you know, down that path of, uh, you know, being polarizing Oops. right as he gets through the New York Jets. And at some time he will be asked about that lingering relationship with Green Bay. We made reference to it earlier. The thing Mark Murphy said on Friday was when asked if there's any scenario where Aaron Rodgers is your starter in 2023, he said, sure, unless things don't work if out, they the don't way work we out the way we to. want them to. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, Good God. So so th that's why there's a chance that he occupies what is essentially a bully pulpit today. I think that's why he does it. It's We can call it access. We can call it, oh, it's enlightening, it's informative, but it's a bully pulpit for him. He goes on and he can say whatever he wants, un unrestrained and unfettered by the folks who are just the conduit for him to say whatever he wants to say. I, I wonder how many notes are compared before these interviews as to what they're even going to talk to him about, if there's a certain point that he wants to make, if there's a direction he wants to be led. But, you know, the bottom line is he can say whatever he wants to say today about the Packers. And if they want him out, but they're the ones who are holding this up, I mean, come on, guys. You want to move on to Jordan Love. That's fine. I got no problem with that. Let's get this done. Let's let the Jets move on. Let's let's let the Packers fan base move on. Let's not let this hang over everyone's head now that we're here. I told you I'd make a decision by today. Now you need to make this happen because you don't want me there, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with that, but why are you squatting on my rights? Just do this deal. You get to avoid paying me $60 million. You avoid any further obligation to me. I was going to retire anyway, so you weren't going to get anything. So why are you being difficult about this? I... I hope that's what he says because I have a feeling that's the truth. Well, I I, I think you're I, I don't yeah I, I would agree with you. I, I feel like that's the truth too, and I think that goes back to our point where we were kind of going back and forth of who has power. 
where ultimately I, I think Rodgers has still the edge in the power. Maybe not as much as I thought, you know, yesterday and some of that. And, you know, you, you were great in describing the contract details and all that. Uh, but, yeah, I, st- I still think ultimately you got one organization that wants to get rid of them and they don't want to deal with it anymore. And they have a first-round quarterback they'd like to see and re- figure out, wait, can he play and do we got to invest in him for the future and start building around him a little bit? So uh, that that's where, yeah, you're right. I mean, if it's, again, back to penny pinching or the difference between a fifth round, extra fifth round or fourth rounder, like you would think the Packers at some point just go, okay, good, wipe our hands clean, we're good, let's move on with life and, and start going here. Penny pinching is now a symbol. Penny you benching. said it recently and corrected yourself. I, you didn't today. I give you a it. few seconds to rectify. Yep. You did not rectify. I did not. My brain Penny was down to the next sentence. I did now. not. I th- thought I was so good with it yeah. yesterday. I thought it came out clean again today. Damn. Darn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully know more today. Hopefully this gets resolved. And and here, here is my my real hope for the Aaron Rodgers introductory press conference in New York, 11 years after there was another fairly significant quarterback introductory press conference. I hope he deliberately uses the word excited or some variation thereof 41 times like Tim Tebow did after he was thrown overboard by the Denver Broncos when they got Peyton Manning in 2012. Remember that? I I'm excited. Oh, it's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I hope he does that. That would be exactly up his alley to just do that and kind of troll everybody and indirectly take a little slap at Tebow for that goofy press conference where he didn't say anything of substance, just repeated over and over and over again how excited he is about being there. We're excited to have this come to a conclusion so we can move forward with the offseason of covering the new look Jets. See, that's the difference between now and 2008. Brett Favre didn't become a Jet until the training camp yeah. train was already moving. Right. We were covering all the teams then. Yeah. You were still in the league back then. I, I, mean, I was on the Bucks. They were on one and- of the teams that they were talking about Brett Favre might go to. It was, you know, of course, I was spleen injury, still not myself. Jeff Garcia was there, and Gruden and company were flirting hardcore with Brett Favre trying to get him to come down there. I really thought there was a chance it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen. It was down to Tampa Bay and New York. Right. He wanted to go to a team in the NFC North. He didn't care which one, just any team that plays the Packers twice a year. That got delayed, obviously, by one season. But it was Jets and Bucks, and eventually got steered to the Jets. The Packers really wanted him out of the division and out of the conference. And they're getting that again. This is perfect. This is the Green Bay-New York pipeline dusted off after 15 years. So, uh, you know, we'll see. we'll see how it goes. But the difference this time is we get the whole offseason most of it, to wonder what's going to happen when Aaron Rodgers plays for the Jets for the first time and the NFL gets a chance to construct the TV schedule, the primetime games. That's the incidental benefit to all of this for the Jets. All of a sudden, they become basically the new Buccaneers, another link between the two teams. The Buccaneers get Tom Brady, and as long as they keep him, they're in primetime almost to the maximum limit. And if not in prime time, they're at the 425 p.m. Eastern game. Now, my goodness, yes. you've got the New York Jets as the darlings, and every network is going to be engaged in this multi-directional tug of war to get as many possible Jets games as they can. My guess is those backroom conversations are already happening. And uh, that's that's a huge difference from the league's perspective. It's so much better that this happens before the schedule comes out than after. A hundred percent. I mean, wow, it's got unbelievable potential. I mean, of course, yeah, it's Rodgers, New York. You know, the Jets are thirsty. The Jets fan base is thirsty for the quarterback. You put you put it together with the AFC East, and you go, oh my gosh. First off, it's like four really really quality football teams. We talked yesterday. I mean, the Dolphins are in that combo for one of the best rosters in football. We know the Bills are still going to be very relevant and have one of the best quarterbacks in football and Josh Allen. And then the Patriots are no slouch. So, I mean, what a division. AFC East, big markets there. Yeah, it all favors the NFL. I'm sure they're happy about it. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be a big deal. And, yeah, certainly kind of a bigger deal already for the, the reasons you mentioned than the Brett Favre thing. And the NFL could set it up the way they want to. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.